Hello everyone and welcome to another Wicked Gameplay episode. Today we're going to do something fairly short, but what we're going to do is look at basic flight planning. And this really only applies to airliners, mostly. Um, you can find some smaller aircraft, like uh, small regional jets and that type of thing, but Cessnas and stuff like that, generally you're not going to be able to use this method. But this really applies to airliners to find a route and to make sure that uh, it is going to work within your particular aircraft and the air rack cycle that is available. So we're not going to be looking at our aircraft specifically today. We're just going to look at how I generate my flight plans. It doesn't cost any money. All these services are free, um, except for one of them, which we're going to be talking about, which is Simbrief. Uh, you do need to sign up for that, but it doesn't cost anything. And there is an option to donate if you uh, feel that it is beneficial. And, you know, I guess just to say thanks for providing a service. So the first thing we're going to do is look at FlightAware. Um, this really is just to give us some idea of a flight. Um, what I usually do is browse by aircraft type and we're going to pick um, a particular aircraft. So in this case, um, I might pick a 737-300, uh, oh, sorry, 700. And I usually pick Boeings because they're quite popular in the US. Obviously being an American company, even though they are all over the world, but I tend to find that, as you can see here, there's quite a lot of Boeing flights in the United States. Now, these don't always work for other parts of the world. Um, you will we'll find the flight, but you don't get the actual plan. And that's really what I use FlightAware for, as you're going to see. So let's just say we've got a list of plans here now. Because I, I like to fly in the US, mostly as you would have seen in my episodes, uh, we can get some idea of like Ontario to Oakland. Um, and that's going to be 55 minutes. And, uh, you know, if we want to do something a little bit longer, so we could say uh, McCarran to Chicago Midway. Uh, that's going to be a three-hour trip, etc. So let's have a little look at, say, maybe this one. So it's probably Southwest Airlines, so we could click that. And you can see the path here that's gonna, that was taken, and this particular flight is still actually happening. Um, it's telling you which gate, all that good stuff, the times, the planned altitude, 37,000 feet. So that's what you can use to put into your... Uh, flight plan and um, it's going to tell you your route right here. Now also we'll decode this and give you a longer version but you don't really need that. If you have this information that is all you actually need to do your flight planning. Now now you can get this information from Simbrief but it don't it doesn't I should say it doesn't always give you the uh, the information, and this is a real-world flight plan. It's current, and it's going to work in, in the majority of cases. If it doesn't, you just go back to the start and choose a different flight for one that will actually work for you. Uh, what you'll also notice here is um, a SID, or Standard Instrument Departure in this case, and a Arrival, and you can tell usually by the numbers on the end. And then you've got your flight plan in the middle here. So this is basically all you need to make this work. Um, okay, so now that we know this is our flight path and this is what we can expect, let's just jump into flight planning here with uh, Flight Vector and KLAS to KMDW. So we're going to jump in here. Let's go KLAS. KMDW. KMDW. Now, pretty much the only reason I use this is to get the charts. In the majority of cases, if it's a large enough airport, you will get the charts in SkyVector. Otherwise, just do a Google search and try to find them. So, here you can actually see you've got the airport chart here if you wanted to have a look at that. You can get all the, all the information. It's going to tell you everything around. That particular airport, the elevation, 2181 feet MSL, um, all, the, all the good stuff that you need to know. If we scroll further down, we'll also find the minimums, standard terminal arrivals or stars, and instrument approach and departure procedures. So this is a one of the airports in the US that you can get the majority of the information you're going to need for your flight planning. Um, so if we go back to our um, flight here on FlightAware, we can see STAAV6. Now let's have a little look uh, for an instrument departure. Should be further down. Uh, 
STAA V6. So you got it here. This is basically it right here. Uh, so we can click on that. It's a two part document. I'm going to rotate this clockwise and we can just zoom in. And you can see the runway is right here. This is basically what's going to happen. We're going to turn around. So we take off, turn around, and go in one of these directions depending on which path we're actually taking. So if we jump back here, we're actually going to be going to, this is the departure, DVC is our uh, transition. So let's have a little look at the transition, DVC. So we're going to be heading this way, and these are going to be all our waypoints, Pools, Thomas, Battis, Meadow, uh, Stav, Tra Trala, Nickley, whatever that is, and DVC, and then onward onto our standard flight route. Uh, so it's got some information about what you need to do, you know, to not exceed 220 knots. So you can have some fun with these. You can either follow them or not follow them. That's really up to you. But it's, it just kind of makes things a little bit interesting. Um, different flights may use different um, transitions. So you've got Milford, Canyon, and uh, obviously Dove Creek here. So in our case, we're going to be using DVC. So when you put in your, uh, your instrument departure, you'll see all these waypoints show up in your FMS. Um, then we will see the same thing for Chicago Midway. We should have a, for the minimums, arrivals, instrument procedures, and departure procedures. And for our particular flight, we were coming in on ND3, and we should see that here in um arrivals nd3 your nd3 continued uh, so you just need to look at these and get some idea some of them will take a little bit of getting used to some of them can be a little bit confusing when you're not familiar with them so you know don't be too daunted basically what you need to do is find out what the transition is for our flight and it's jallop here that's our last waypoint before we start our arrival so if we look at Jallop, we'll be here. Then we'll come into Campbell, Edens, Purity, so on, and then move into our um, next uh, page. This is the following page. Uh, we'd probably have to go back and have a look at the page two of that. Hmm, where was I? I kind of lost myself. Midway, arrivals, oh, here it is here. I'm going to open that in a new tab and open that one in a new tab. Um, so this is page two, should be. This is continuing on from ND, so if we look back at where we were here, zoom in. You can see here ND, so you're going to see this route in our flight plan. You should see these waypoints all the way up to ND, and then moving into here, um, going into one of these particular routes. Um, so, what does it actually say? Da -da -da. Radar vectors to final course. So you can see in these particular cases, you know, it's not going to take you all the way to the runway. It's going to, in these cases, you would get ATC vectors, but these are as far as it's going to take you on one of these waypoints. Um, and then you continue on from there. So depending on, um, I guess, which transition you're going to choose here, it'll probably be in the, um, in the FMS. So you can have a look and, and just choose one of these points and just have a quick look. Um, by looking at what your route is actually doing to which one you actually want to choose. But that's a little bit tricky. You just need to be familiar with that. So use Sky Vector to look at the charts mostly. Um, and then we can use SimBrief to confirm it. So you signed up for SimBrief. You can go to Dispatch System here. And you'll get this page that I'm looking at. Then we can go Create a New Flight Plan. And if this is the plan we wanted, we would go KLASKMDW. Let's put that in here, KLIS, KMDW. It's going to give you an alternate. It's going to give you a time and day. You can put your flight number. You can pick which particular aircraft. 
that you're going to be flying. It doesn't have to be the aircraft that we picked from, um, in this case, it was Southwest. It doesn't have to be. It can be a 318, it can be a 320, it can be a Boeing, it can be whatever aircraft you choose. This is really just to get you the flight plan. So if we're going to choose the 320, it's going to use some of that to calculate. So it's going to give us a runway departure, an arrival. Uh, so we know with one right and arrive at four right, um, we can put our altitude in here, we can set our passengers, all that stuff. It does actually give you the route in here. So you can bypass all that and put that and just see what it offers you here. But I like to double check it. Sometimes I have found that I, I can't find a flight plan in here. So I go and get one from um, from FlightAware and I just make sure that you know it is a, uh, a route that I can use. So I'm gonna copy that and we'll just check that it is actually exactly the same. You can see it's exactly the same. So in this particular case, we wouldn't have to do that, but I wanted to show you the process of finding a route if this doesn't give you one that you like. Then what you can do here is you can see here, I've got this set up for Air Rack 1504. That's what my aircraft is set up for. That was my last um, purchase of an Air Rack cycle from Navigraph. And then you can check that this is accurate. So for Air Rack 1504, this route is accurate. So if your aircraft has Air Rack Cycle 1504, this is going to work. Uh, the aircraft is going to be able to recognize each of these waypoints and um, airways, all that sort of stuff, and it's going to be able to follow this route without any problem. So that's really good and useful. Down here you can see what this kind of looks like, and you should be able to hover over these little icons and it will give you the waypoint. So if you wanted to understand what each waypoint looks like, you know, you can have a look at that and get some idea of how this looks. Okay, so this is just good to visualize it and check this against what your aircraft is actually doing. Once you've got that far, um, you've put all your details in, you generate an OFP, I'm not sure what that means, a flight plan, and it's going to give us a fancy flight plan. It's actually done by Real World Dispatchers, at least I'm pretty sure that's what this, who actually did this site. So kudos to those guys. But as a just a flight sim enthusiast, it can be a little bit confusing and I still don't read everything on there. I just pick and choose the details I want to add to my FMS because I am the captain after all. So I get to choose. So it's going to give us the route here. This is going to be everything we need to know, all the details. And further down, it's going to tell us some details about the flight, um, what we're going to be actually doing, the weights, the trip fuel. Um, so you're going to have to spend a bit of time getting used to this because I haven't actually looked at this for a while. And I have to be honest, I can't remember exactly everything in here. So um, it's got your block weights. It's got everything you kind of need to set up your aircraft. Um, so you can go through here and do all that. So I apologize for not explaining all these. This looks a little bit different to the last time I used it, but we should find here what we're actually going to be doing. Let's have a quick look. It normally tells us which, um, so this is the maximum fuel here, 10742. That's what you'd normally do. Um, then your block fuel, uh, what is it, 11,000, so it's going to be like 11.1, .1. and that should be that, and we're going to be taking off, that's our alternate, it normally tells us our takeoff, I think I've missed it, where is our takeoff? Take off weight. Is it further up here? No, it should be down here somewhere. Okay, so here it is. I apologize. It, it looks a little bit different. I think they've updated this a little bit. So we're taking off one right from KLAS. This is our flight plan. And then we're landing at four right at uh, Chicago Midway. And if you spend a bit of time, you can figure all this out. Uh, I do apologize, but they do actually have some uh, flight plans here that you can 
download and set up for your particular got here for the X-Plane or PMDG or whatever. So this doesn't just apply to X-Plane. This can be any of these uh, particular planes. So Airbus Extended, I think, works for the flight factor ones. So, or you can just manually program it in. So that's basically all I do to get my flight plans and uh, it seems to work okay. It doesn't always work out. And some of the, the routes can be a little bit confusing, so I just abandon it and just pick something else. But that just gives you an idea. It generally works really well for US flights. Uh, other parts of the world don't always show you the route. There'll be just nothing in there. So in those cases, you might have to uh, choose something else or, or try and find a way of generating a route. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this has given you some insight. Maybe in another episode, we can look at taking this flight plan and applying it to the FMS in uh, an Airbus or or a uh, Boeing. Anyway, have a great night and we'll catch you on the next one.